Hi all, I'd like to do another video for the Evolution of Style series and I want to show you an intriguing encounter between Mikhail Popnik and Capablanca which is not very well documented on YouTube uh, or other places. It was their 1936 encounter, not the encounter at Avro which had a brilliancy in it, but in 1936 at Moscow. Let's have a look. Knight f3 from Mikhail Botvinnik. Capablanca played knight f6. We saw c4, e6, g3, b6. So Queen's Indian territory. Very topical uh, opening today. Bishop g2, bishop b7. White castles. And now uh, let's check with live book actually. c5 is the most popular move today. It was played by Capablanca. And we have b3, which, which is a nice move for double fianchetto. A little bit more popular is just knight c3, but the double fianchetto is popular as well. Knight c6, bishop b2, bishop e7, knight c3. Castles, this is very heavily beaten track so far. d4, immediate d4 here is quite interesting. Also e3 is quite quite used a lot, quite popular. So d4, uh, black took with the knight, white took. And we have bishop takes g2 now, king takes, c takes, queen takes d4. So here white has a little advantage from the opening uh, against Capablanca. Let's put on a bit so a small advantage. Capablanca plays queen c7. We see e4. So there's a kind of Moroxy bind grip on the d5 square. And consider that the backward, you know, d pawn is subject to intense pressure potentially down that d file. And we see this now, white just builds up a little bit on the d file, rook a d1, quite naturally, queen b7. This diagonal to the king is just blunted, not by the king moving, but by f3. Knight e8, it looks as though bishop f6 might be handy at some point. There's a bit of danger lurking on this diagonal, black has to be careful on the diagonal. Rook d2, just simply, just gonna build up on the d file. So it seems here there's there's quite a bind on the position. Black's in quite an uncomfortable state. Kappa lashes out here with f5. And this is kind of ignored. White just puts more pressure down the d file with rook fd1. We see now bishop g5, the rook moves. Bishop f6, white's advantage now is becoming even clearer after e5. There's a lockdown even more on the poor d pawn after bishop e7. It's quite an impressive looking position really for white. Uh, but black is actually threatening uh, things like bishop c5 potentially. The queen gets out of uh, the way of things by playing queen f2. And we see now rook f7 being played. The Queen's also you know, prepared to perhaps go to d2 if they did. And actually here, yes, Queen d2 is now putting even more pressure again on d7 with the Rook leading that pressure. So he's, uh, Mikhail has rearranged his triple battery on d7 more effectively to now threaten Rook takes d7. So Capablanca plays Bishop b4 protecting with that rook f7 now, the d7 pawn. Very, very passive position indeed. It is clearly better for white. Uh, a3, the bishop goes back all the way to f8 now. Now we see knight e2, the knight has a menacing threat now of knight f4 and knight takes e6 just to exploit that pin. That d pawn is immobilized by the pin here, so knight f4 threatens, knight takes e6. Campbell plays knight c7 in advance of knight f4, protecting the e6 point. Knight f4, black doesn't want to play a move like g5. That looks horrendous for, for things like knight h5 here. This looks like a, a huge advantage for white. So that knight's quite horrible on f4. Black instead plays g6. So Botnik's in a fantastic position here. Very, very clear uh, advantage. He plays h4, which even reinforces more than knight on f4. What can Capablanca do? Well, he plays b5, which seems to try and break, you know, white's binds on, on the d5 square, white's bind in general. Uh, but this is a weakening move. This is a little bit of a desperate move. Uh, from an engine point of view, uh, this position is very, very tricky. An engine would be trying to play the best moves and not really do anything 
to even potentially work and worsen the position like queen b8 or queen c8 it doesn't really actually do anything this kind of move uh, black's just waiting for white to, to do something terrible here so engine's got no ideas either but Capablanca plays b5 and we see now something very interesting c takes b5 now there's no knight takes b5 because knight takes e6 mentioned before this is crushing this will be absolutely crushing uh, you know if if rook e8 then we just take on f8 and then we uh, consider taking on d7 or even worse there's, there's other worse possibilities uh, in this position even like e6 for example a4 just to get on this diagonal and that would be absolutely terrible for black so basically this this is really really uh, quite dangerous black has to play uh, queen takes b5 to regain that pawn now we see rook c1 and if the knight moves then again knight takes e6 so if the knight moves we just play knight takes e6 again using the pin it's a horrendous state of affairs this position black tries to support the knight with queen b7 and here it wasn't played but there's a really crushing move in this position if i gave you sense 10 seconds uh, to pause the video you might want to pause the video here what would you play with white i'll give you a cute clue there's a slight weakness of the last move so don't if you assume that the whole position before was like validated like a you know a computer program and it's the new code which has bugs it's the new move which has a kind of bug to it a weakness of the last move so queen b7 what would you play in this position to exploit that weakness of the last move that's the clue so 10 seconds starting from now okay this would have been crushing queen a5 if the knight moves again you know we've got knight takes well actually even better than knight takes we just take the rook here <laughs> that's the point we're pinning the knight to the rook uh, but also of course uh, technically knight e6 as well but if rook c8 then we just build up on the poor knight with rook dc3 and how does black defend this if d5 it's hopeless knight takes e6 now there's a new pin to celebrate crushing we'll just be winning the exchange at the very least so actually this wasn't played though uh, there's a bit of a let off um, Pat's thinking this this is a small you know good enough advantage tempted by this Bovnik plays an inferior move rook takes c7 instead an inferior but still you know a, a promising advantage though so perhaps he didn't want to look around for anything better but sometimes it, it does pay there's a there's an ex expression in chess you know if you find a good move wait and look for a better one and you know to continue the analogy with programming you know if, if you're in an untested part of a program there's a bug there might even be even worse bugs if it's untested it's like so the queen a5 was really really crushing it would be like spending the end of the game and Capablanca basically admitted that in his notes for this game so there's been a little bit of a let off here we see knight takes e6 okay we're nabbing one pawn and we're getting a very lucrative pin on the bishop on f8 but now we start to see some great resourcefulness from Capablanca kicking off with f4 uh, so white doesn't want to damage his own pawn structure uh, if g takes f4 just just takes as an example actually rook takes f4 might be on here to decoy the queen away from the rook but still you know white would be better just taking there uh, this position is still still better for white um, but you know it's not that crushing as it could have been so white actually plays g4 which might be a slight improvement over taking on f4 we see queen e7 and now here to defend h4 g5 is probably uh, the best way at least at least from an engine perspective if this is trying to be undermined then we have bishop c3 here there's no time for black to do this because we've got this bishop b4 coming up on the cards bishop b4 against f8 for example bishop b4 and here actually we, need, we can go for the king with queen d3 and it's it's you know black's getting overloaded with this pin and, and the pressure on the king side but actually strangely uh White didn't play that. White played King H3, and Kempelbank is starting to generate some counterplay. This has a weakness of the last move now. 
it's neglecting G1. This is uh, useful to, to note. But also the F3 square is a bit neglected. We see Queen B7 hitting the F3 pawn and also the B3 pawn. Queen D3 protecting both, King G7 unpinning. Is black actually threatening anything here? Well, potentially a5. We've got a loose piece to try and target with a5, a4. We see b4, and again the loose piece is targeted with a5 here, which is good. There's a focal point now on b4. Black starting potentially to get back in the game, but actually, actually the move a5 might, although it seems logical, that there might have been uh, other things to try because this is a protected pass one. It's still it's still a definite advantage for white. A4, and then we see G5, Bishop C5, and it looks as though uh, potentially black might be threatening uh, to get on this diagonal or do, do something uh, like interfere with Bishop E3 here. Could be an interference move for, for Queen takes F3 to be a threat, but I don't, I don't actually think it's a big deal. White kind of maybe got a bit excited here by the prospect of trying to open up this diagonal. White didn't need to do this. Any move like King G2 would, would, would do here just to keep the position intact, the advantages intact. White's got this, you know, protected pass pawn here. Uh, it's difficult to see what black is um, actually doing if just King G2. Just, just take this as an example. Bishop F8, Queen C4, starting to put pressure just gradually, you know, with with the e6 pawn under fire. And you know, it's big trouble here. And it is actually big trouble. If we try and protect this pawn, you know, then rook d6, we can start putting black's position under great, great scrutiny. If rook c6 here, and then b6, we can start just making progress like this. This is an absolutely crushing position with just, just this protected past pawn. But instead, you know, we see a slightly strange move, maybe like time pressure symptoms here in practical play. We see rook d6. Which is spectacularly going after e6. You know, doesn't matter about the exchange. It seems, and in a way, you know, but for the next right, this 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 exchange sack seems quite justified. This diagonal looks absolutely fantastic. We've actually got two passed pawns now against Capablanca. King f8 is played, and now an incisive move is apparently Queen uh, c3 here playing for that queen h8 which actually threatens mate this this position is very tricky for black if king e8 queen c6 you know if queen d7 here bishop f6 and these pass pawns are just a menace black is hardly in a position to do much a spike check and blacks you know basically lost here you know he'll never be able to take it we've got two connected pass pawns but something very very interesting happens here we see bishop f6 and all of a sudden it seems Capablanca's in with a shot now after King e8. He's just going to blockade this d pawn. These pawns are not connected together here. We see Bishop e7. And this is a little bit of a blunder, actually. White should have played something like Queen c3 here or King g2. Bishop e7 carries with it a weakness to the last move. It lets the rook now escape to f5. The rook's no longer passive. It's threatening things like rook takes b5 here, queen c3. It's collapsing, in fact, now after uh, you know potentially just rook takes b5. But we see king d7. So the d pawn's not going anywhere. The b pawn's about to be eliminated. White is basically the exchange down for not much compensation. If he tries going, you know, queen g7, this queen takes f3. We see b6, queen c6, and now he does go for g7. So he does allow queen takes f3. He's fluffed up the position. There's these checks now, which uh, just munch white. So check. And now Capablanca plays king c6. He just wants to get out of this uh, discovered check business, which could make his king. He's getting his king into safety. Queen b2 looks as though b7 is an issue. Rook d5, though, is now threatening the very quick rook d2 check. White plays check now. After king b5, white's in a hopeless uh, state because of rook d2. So it's rook d2, which we saw in the earlier encounter when, when Botvinnik beat um, 
Campablanca, that was a killer move, but here it's uh, Campablanca aiming for rook d2. And here white has to resign, really. There's nothing. This rook d2 is crushing. Uh, just to show you, you know, we, that's not doing anything. Just rook d2 here. King h3 is a mate in one with queen e3. So white would have to lose the queen, and then the pawn's not going anywhere. So it was a very interesting practical contest. It's not the most celebrated encounter ever, but it has a special significance, this game. It's actually the only game, it seems, that I can find on Chess Gamescom at least, uh, which is quite a large database now, where uh, Mikhail Botvinnik actually lost to Gamperplanka. It's the only loss, it seems, recorded this 1936. Now, I I know that there's, there's going to be highlights on, on the previous World Champions of Chess, but I want to share with you something also I, I've noticed earlier today. I stumbled across this, that actually in the Hastings tournament of the previous year, 1934 to 35, believe it or not, both Mikhail Botvinnik and Capablanca were defeated by the same player, a British player, a London champion, uh, Sir George Allen Thomas. And I think we might devote one or two videos to Sir George Allen Thomas for this achievement. Uh, it seems right that the you know these these players, you know, Mikhail Bobbin and Capablanca weren't that all the time that invincible. And for both of them to be beaten in the same tournament, I think is quite notable for the current series. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular game. It shows the practicalities of chess and how even a dominating position can be blown, even in the hands of such a great player as Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, I think in, in later Hastings, he had arrived a few days before to acclimatise him more, and he came with his wife. One of the first times uh, a, a player from the USSR was allowed to be accompanied by his wife uh, to... Um, to Hastings, sorry, that that was in, in the game he lost to, to Thomas, and so did Capablanca, lost to Sir George Allen Thomas. But uh, we'll leave that for another video or two in this series. So I hope you enjoyed this particular game. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.